morning, Windsor, Essex. The coffee is flowing, the tea is flowing through our brains. Our minds are ready to make some change in this community today. Availability of skilled labor has, is number one, 100%. 100% of, of consultants surveyed uh, saying that labor, uh, availability of skilled labor is number one. Labor costs, of course, very important, number three. One in four youth growing up in poverty stay in poverty. This is the intergenerational cycle in our community, and this cycle can be broken most easily through educational attainment. We just haven't done enough, enough good work collectively over the last number of years across the province, all of us, about making sure that we get uh, the right skills uh, to the right people at the right time. We do have people without jobs and jobs without people. We've got to solve that. I think Fraser's point earlier was, was accurate. If we don't get this thing solved, it really lose the jobs or be automated or, or some of the above or all of the above. This community needs everybody in this room to express an interest in something like this. We would really love for you to take part in that conversation. There are still thousands of people in our community who would like a job and can't connect with one. We also need to try to maximize the growth potential of our community. Uh, years back we noticed that there was a gap for tech training in Michigan. There were no institutions to learn technology other than really expensive four-year universities. And this was making it a bit unaccessible for people in the city of Detroit to gain access to these technical roles. So we asked ourselves, how can we combat this to create amazing careers in technology? It was simple, make it accessible. So you need to look farther into the future than what is needed now. You need to figure out what the skill set of the future will be, where the jobs without people will be, and where the people without jobs will be. One of the biggest reasons <laughs> we've started reaching out to different pockets for recruiting is because we have a serious, serious skills trade shortage. These trades, we need people in the jobs, and we don't have people going into the jobs. But just, you know, 50 or 60 years ago when the Portuguese and the Italian immigrants came over and they took whatever job they could to feed their family, that's, that's what new immigrants do. And I'm, you know, I'm excited to see in another 40 years our Syrians hopefully running these places because we're going to get them all into these jobs. You know, we can't help but think about things like connected and automated mobility in our economy and in our region and information technology and all these other things and, and where is the ball moving there? Uh, we need to understand those things so that we can make sure that the talent um, is, is ready when those activities happen. One of the, the things that we've learned over a period of time is that even job seekers with really good skills have a difficult time completing applications. It was essential for us to, to bring them together in a group and walk them through that process to make sure that they were completing everything. So those are also the kinds of things that were covered in the workshop. Already during school life, do internships whilst kids are in school, introducing them to the trades, to the companies, introducing them to the variety of job opportunities they might have, just for a few days to get them, them an idea and let them know about the system and that there's something else than going to university. Opportunity for employers is to be highly flexible because when people first arrive, they have different needs. And I believe that high flexibility extends beyond refugees. It, be, it is the new way that companies will thrive. Who can you work with in this room or in the community to help solve these problems and respond to the challenge of people without jobs and jobs without people?